Let's call the select board meeting for Monday, December 21st, 2020 to order at 7.03. Um, everybody is aware it's a Zoom meeting, so please mute yourself. And if you need to talk, raise your hand or send us a chat or wave at us or something. Um, public forum. Opportunity for citizens to briefly share comments and concerns with the board about matters not already on the agenda that would take less than five minutes. Is there anybody who? Michelle, can I just thank the Bristol Recreation Department for the great holiday events that they've managed to throw during COVID? Um, I know it's been difficult, but I think they've definitely made the best of a tough situation. And I certainly had gotten to take advantage of some of that with my kids, and I'm appreciative it was there. You bet they are, and it's been great. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> John, did you have something you wanted to say? Two quick things. Uh, one, I, it's been a while, but I've been meaning to come and say this. I love the new speed sign coming into town from the east out by the Prayer Rock. I, I love getting thanked for going the speed limit. It, it's <laughs> it's really enlightened, and it and I think it's really um, effective. So. Uh, I know I think the chief played a big role in pulling that together. That was great. And I've been watching, it seems to really work. The other thing I was just wondering, and I don't need an answer to this, but a question uh, with the snow this week, uh, there's definitely people who want to get off of River Road at like Bartlett's and some of the other asides uh, and look at the river, me being one of them. And I'm wondering, it, I don't know if the state or the town is responsible for planning that, but I wonder if it is the town, if there isn't some way that they could clear one of those asides, you know. I yeah, was gonna say, when you said yeah. River Road, I think New Haven. Yeah, oh yeah, so it's it's now it's Lincoln Road, I guess. Yeah, okay. Um, but I was going by there a couple of times in the snow the last few days and I noticed people sort of struggling to get in or out of those asides. And uh, it might be nice to plow one or two of them if, there's, if that's not an inconvenience, but I leave that to the people who know. Okay. Thanks. Hey, speaking of the speed sign, Bruce, it wasn't working this weekend. Was that because there was snow on the solar? I believe so. Uh, one clean the uh, snow off and it seems to uh, be working now. So yeah. that or- yeah, uh, I noticed it, noticed it was working when I came in this morning, but it was off most of the weekend. Yeah, the, the, the batteries also uh, with the cold weather, sometimes that's affected. So we're gonna check those too. Okay. Right. Okay. Regular business. Consider candidates and appointments to transition from a zoning board of adjustment to a development review board and address one or more planning commission vacancies. So hopefully select board members had a chance to glance at the draft resolution that's been prepared and also uh, review some the letters and emails of interest from a number of citizens who have expressed interest in serving on either the DRB or the Planning Commission. Several of which are here. I think all of them are here tonight. Okay, anybody have any questions? So regarding the uh, the resolution, mm -hmm. is out the uh, the formation of the development review board uh, as proposed. It's suggesting that it, that once appointed, it becomes effective January one, um, and then it lays out uh, three different uh, groups of terms. Uh, if it's a nine member board, and we and the the three year terms need to be staggered so everybody doesn't. Uh, their terms don't come up all at the same time. So there's three different, there's uh, three three-year terms, three two-year terms, and three one-year terms. And uh, even though they, it would be uh, uh, potentially effective beginning in January with the three-year term ending in March 2014, yeah, that's a little bit longer than three years, but it's that, that shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. And it, we're doing a seven board, seven member board, two alternates for the correct DOB, correct? Okay. <clears throat> and so uh, give me, give me the names again. 
Val. Sure. Um, Robert Rooker, who's on the planning yeah. commission now, he yeah. would like to be considered as an alternate and remain on the planning commission. Correct. Um, John Moyers has expressed yeah. interest in the development review board. Yeah. Catherine Wilson is uh, interested in the planning commission. And okay. Melissa Hernandez is interested in the planning commission. And then Brenda wants to and remain. Brenda Tilburg. Uh, did send something in writing. Uh, she's up currently on the Zoning Board of Adjustment and right. she's going to be considered for the DRB. I believe Kevin Brown, yep. only on the ZBA, would also like to be considered for the DRB. Okay. And those are the only people that you've heard from so far from the current ZBA? Correct. Okay, that's only four. <laughs> Well, it's a slow bill. Is, is to uh, appoint members of the current ZBA to the DRB. Just well, kind of more. What are the, who are the current ZBA members? I know Peter Grant. We've got uh, Carol Klaus, Ted Desmond, Paul Jackman, Brenda Tilburg, Kevin Brown, Peter Grant, and Ron Kowalski. At least that's what's listed on the town website. Yeah, and Ron's, a, Ron's an alternate, right? Oh, he is? Okay, it doesn't say, but I can, yeah, uh, I can update that. Um, and I don't know, so we've only heard from Brenda and Kevin, and, Kevin. And, we, and we assume that everyone on that board knows about the development review board and that the zoning board is, will be going away. Chris has, right. uh, has, has been in touch with all of the members. Okay, okay, so they do know, or, or, or yes. we know that they've received notification. Yes. Okay. Um, and Chris, Chris has not said to you he's heard from any of them other than who have already contacted you. Say that again. Chris has has Chris heard from any of those others? Not that, that I'm he aware. hasn't told you about. Okay. okay. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So we actually so we don't know if they are not interested. We we they haven't given a, a no right. answer. Okay. Right. But th that right. I, that's not a reason to appoint them though to the new board. Mm -hmm. um, it would be good to to get a, a a no or a yes or a maybe from all of them that we haven't heard from. So that might be some following up. Mm -hmm. um, and Melissa, Melissa, you're interested in the PC, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So for planning commission, according to the website, we have uh, a single vacancy, and we have two applicants. Catherine and Melissa this evening, is that correct? I thought there were two openings. Val, yeah, you said there were two openings. There's only one. Only actually, actually, yeah. Yeah. actually, there are three of us who, who are throwing our hats in the ring for that as well. Oh, that's right, yes. Oh, sorry, John. I'm so easily forgettable. That's all right. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it's because you, you were hiding behind Darla. <laughs> yeah, so it's what I usually do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I, I hadn't printed off your letter, so your email. That's, that's quite all right. So, okay. It, is there two? Two vacancies or three vacancies being the, the way this reads, we're changing the board to set, uh, seven from nine. So do we still have the vacancies? The current or ZBA is seven. a seven member board with two alternates. Okay, that's not what the, that's not what the resolution says. It says current nine member board will be dissolved and in its place, the commission will will establish uh, seven members. Oh, I thought I thought the ZB. I don't remember the no num specific number. I thought it was seven and two alternates. Mm -hmm. The current ZBA. Yeah, For the ZBA, right. yeah, but the the planning commission. If you read the next to the last paragraph. Just above our signatures. Uh, oh, uh, that that's an, uh, yeah, I'm glad you caught that. I meant to delete that whole paragraph. So that we'll still have to be deleted. Seven member with two alternates. And it seems like that's what we're keeping. 
Uh, it's not it's not specifically spelled out on the website as that. It's just a list of, of nine uh, positions. Is that correct, Valerie? I think all of our commissions or committees are seven. Right, right, yeah, just delete that paragraph up re referring to the planning commission. Okay. Okay, so given that, um, looking at the planning commission, we have a, if we do that one first, we have three candidates and we have currently one vacancy on it, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if, uh, Val, you have other information with regard to the other members. Uh, Chris didn't tell me, uh, following up on the Planning Commission's meeting last week, that one Planning Commission member had intended to uh, express interest in serving on the DRB instead of the Planning Commission, but I haven't received anything. Okay. Okay. So there's potential for possibly two vacancies. Possibly. Okay. And what are what are the terms? Uh, planning commission is four years, and the uh, DRB would be three years. But for this first first forming of the DRB, they'd be staggered three years. Right. One possibility for today to see any of the cast to speak and perhaps the slide for if you can destroy it if you kind of get get the idea. Uh, but also uh, working with uh, you know green technology, green energies, uh, you know for the for the Bristol going forward into the future, and uh, of course keeping in mind climate change, which is coming. It's happening now, but more is coming, and just what we need to do to plan with all of that in mind. And I'm sorry, I'm not very coherent right now. Like I said, I'm, I've been working a lot of hours and I'm, I'm just extremely tired <laughs> right now. So if you have any questions, if anybody has any questions, certainly let me hear. Thank you, Melissa. Anybody else would like to say anything? Does anybody have I would, I would like to, Catherine, if you would like that's fine. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, do, I missed who was speaking, but I thought I would introduce myself. Um, I'm Catherine Wilson, and I... So thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Go ahead, John. Well, uh, for those of you who may not know me, I'm looking at the faces. I think everybody does. Uh, my name is John Cromer. I have been uh, I've been here a little over ten years now, and in that time, I have been. What I become in the next five, 10, 20 years. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in, in uh, you know, hopefully uh, being a part of that uh, change and being, being a part of that positivity and uh, taking some of that energy and, and moving it all forward. 
and to, uh, you know, again, you have to echo both Catherine and Melissa's comments as well. The, we have so much here and so much to offer and so many great people. And, and, and as a consumer, it has been a great pleasure to be able to, to shop on our main street and to go into Melissa's store or to Jen's store or to Art on Main and be able to, you know, to spend our money here and, and uh, you know, just support, support our downtown. And I'd like to see that, uh, you know, I'd like to see that continue. Um, sometimes it takes a little rattling of the cage, a little shaking of the tree, if you will, which kind of this pandemic has kind of been to kind of, you know, give us all a little wake up call. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I can see a lot of good coming out of this, coming out of this pandemic when we finally get on the, the other side of it. And I'd like to see us uh, be able to take that momentum and, and keep moving our town forward. Um, that's pretty much my story. And I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to it. And uh, I, I see Melissa, you know, I, I think I probably got you beat on the tired scale. I'm coming off a nice case of mono right now <laughs> as we speak. So uh, if, if my eyes look like they're barely open, that's because they are barely open. So, <laughs> uh, at, uh, I just want to thank you. Thank you folks for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to speak and to, to be a part of this. Thank you, Thanks, John. John. Yep, thank you. Okay. Anybody who's running for DRB, would you like to speak? I would just say uh, I, I let I put in a letter that I thought was pretty long, so I won't add to it, but uh, <laughs> um, but I'd have, be happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'll say to you guys is that I think it's going to be more work than the ZBA. <laughs> anybody have any yeah. questions for anybody? Okay. I was, um, I was just wondering, um, when will the decision be made on the commission seats or do you know? My guess is we'll probably go into executive session tonight to talk and and at least for the PC side, I'm not quite sure about what we're going to do about the DRB. Um, we have four people right now and we need at least seven. So <laughs> seven with two alternates. So we'll have to figure that piece out. Um, okay. But, Are you just going to email? Email yeah, us? Yeah, that, that will be in touch with, with okay. you guys. Okay. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for coming and putting in your two cents. We appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate your giving your time. Okay. We good with that right now? Val, do we need do do we need to do the resolution? Should we have that done? Well, um if there are any other uh substantive aspects of it that you want to talk about now, like catching that planning commission paragraph, that was really good. Um just a little backstory on that. Um if you notice the uh, the sample resolution that was in the VLCT bulletin, the technical bulletin, that was uh, incredibly similar to a resolution that I had used back in 2007 in Waitsfield, when Waitsfield went from a ZBA to do a DRB. And uh, in that instance, they also transitioned from a nine member planning commission to a seven member planning commission. And so I just took that resolution that I'd already done and since it was so similar to the VLCT one, I just I just adapted it to Bristol, but I, I overlooked pulling out that paragraph. So that's why that was there. Okay, and, so that, par that paragraph will go away. Oh yes, yeah. definitely. Um, and I think I caught all the other um, details, but uh, do you wanna talk about um, an effective date? January one sounds fine to me, but as long as we can get enough people on the the DRB to <laughs> be able right, to because them. the resolution isn't separate to the actual members, correct? Or can it be? Well, it it can be. I mean, if you have members you can appoint to it now, that'd be great. Four um, would be a quorum. Quorum, right? Okay. I mean, because I know at our at last week's meeting, Peter brought up the not the issue, but the the potential for confusion and complications of, because we've already approved the uh, unified development regulations and, they, and that needs 
the DRB and we don't have a DRB yet. Um, so I'd be, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to speak in executive uh, session about the candidates this evening um, and then potentially sign and, and have fewer candidates than we need just to be able to get, have the board established and then hopefully receive more interest as we go along and, and in you know, our first meeting in January, be able to have hopefully some more candidates that we can look at interview and then mm -hmm. potentially uh, assign to that to the board. Yep. That's what okay. I was thinking with the January one date. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least it gets gets it established for us. Because mm -hmm. so even we'll if they it. even if they have uh, an application tomorrow, it's still going to take a fifteen day uh, hearing period. So right. no period. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we'll deal with both the resolution and executive session as well, or at least you know. Once we figure out who's on what and doing where, what we can right. deal with the resolution. Okay. Okay. We can, why can't we do the resolution now and just fill the people in later? That's an option. We can. Because th th there's no reason for this to be done in an executive session that I can see. Correct. Not the resolution, no. Okay. So I move. I move we adopt the uh, resolution to form a development review board. With the Second. changes. Yeah. With the changes, yes. I'll second that. Ian seconded. Any more discussion about the resolution? All those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. So we can move on to the budget workshop. Yeah. Worksheet workshop. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays. Yeah. Budget workshop. Police department, capital plans, other budget sections. Just to, uh, just to mention that um, um, that uh, Eric will not be joining us tonight for um, Public Works. Jen, are you going to share your screen or? I'm muted. I'm sitting here talking to you. And <laughs> <laughs> for how long? Minutes? <laughs> I'm just pretending I'm talking to my kids, Ian. This is name <laughs> no one listening. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. oh yeah i want this one but i'm gonna just switch tabs here because this is bruce and michelle i just saw your email and shared it with bruce and we hadn't included excuse me that revenue in there okay that you had mentioned so that yep. is um so thanks for bringing that up. He had just reminded um, Bruce and I that we had agreed that they would be the dog, not to bring up bad memories for Bruce, but oh, right. <laughs> warden <laughs> or whatever officer, whatever they're called. So uh, that revenue was going to come to the, to the budget. So I had forgotten to add that. Come on, Joel donated that dog cage. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so Jen, the, 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 um, the spreadsheet that I clicked on over the weekend, um, the one that I made the PDF out of, that's in that's up posted on the website. I did I did add the tax revenue in there, so I'm not sure what version. I had taken it out because Bruce and I had made some changes, and so it wasn't lining up right. So I had just taken it out just to figure figure out what the tax implication was. Um, it's down at the bottom. I think you added a nice formula so you could see what the tax implication would be. How so so you you take you took it out since I since I did just that. on the screen okay. just so we could see because um it got it it was off a little bit and so I just took it out to see where the revenues were at without the tax in there. Got and it. We can add it back in but if I scroll to the bottom here, let me just finish this. Um, dog. Um, let's see here. So that'll change that tax implication again. Yeah. But you've made a nice little formula, I think, on the bottom. Uh. To see what the tax implicate, what would have to be raised by taxes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just for for reference. Mm -hmm. But I'll go back to the top and then I'll let Bruce take it. <laughs> Sorry.
Okay. Um, do you want to go line by line or does, how do you want to do this? Your budget. <laughs> I think, I think line by line, that's how we've done okay. the other budgets. And it just seems like, I mean, you don't have a lot of lines, so. It no. Be okay. A, a, um, so the detail revenue, um, with uh, COVID, uh, I don't know what we're going to have. Um, so we're kind of estimating that maybe 2000. Um, I, I'm sure there's probably one or two events that may not come back that we've, we've had to do work at previously. Uh, so that's where we came up with 2000. Uh, the town contract, we upped that to 12,000 the year before. We're gonna leave that the same. Bruce, just a quick question. The detail revenue is when a private company hires you or a private service hires you guys out. Correct. Okay. Yes. And even though, I mean, Bruce, with that, you've got, you're starting in July, which hopefully if, you know, everything goes well, everyone's well vaccinated by then. And then we're going into the next year, but it's still, you're still hesitant just because I, of. You just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. We can we can put a number in there. I'm just trying to be conservative. Uh, yeah. If if the vaccines go as they're anticipating, hopefully by uh, fall we should be in good shape. But we don't know. Right. In in one of these or two of these are related to events that go on at the school or sports related. So if it, if we're not, you know, um, hundred percent, then right we won't those. And if it's more, then that's that's good. Right. If it's more, it's good. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I like I said, I was just trying to be conservative with the numbers. Yeah. Uh, I think that's why we tried to keep everything flat level is wherever we could. So the next uh, one, two, three, um, one, two, three, everything or five, we we kept the same because I don't really anticipate much of a difference there. Bruce, can I ask a question on police non-district service? Yes. Uh, 19 was, year 19 was 43.65 and actual year 20 was 40.50. And you're, you would think you're gonna get 6,600, you're up in that? I mean, um, we did last year or this year we budgeted. Right, we upped our rates because we hadn't had any kind of a rate change. Um, so- it, Okay. I, we're, we're, we're trying to guess at, um, especially recently, uh, the agencies have had to assist each other more with COVID. Um, so so you don't think you're gonna do more non-district service, just the rate's gonna cover cover the hours that you did with the- at Correct, and, and because of, of what we've been encountering, at least in the short term, we may be doing a few more assistance calls that we weren't doing in the past. Okay. Will the uh, sorry, Bruce? Will the GA will the governor's highway uh, grant come back at all? Yes, yes, that will. Okay. Uh, there is, you know, it's the new year has started, but um, everybody is being cautious with their encounters with the public. Yeah, understandably. The, Bruce, isn't that the one you're doing with Virgin through Virgins? Yes, Virgins is the host agency. Yes. Okay. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. So that's why we don't have anything there. You yeah. Know. So how does that come in? How do you see, how would you see that in your budget? Uh, it's a good question. I can, I can help you because you, you're not gonna know the answer to this. Because <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's not it related. It's not he, he might it's know. Not be, it's not to be mean, it's just, it's an audit thing. So what happens is um, that grant allows him to charge out at the higher rate because we think about FICA, Medi, um, insurance, short-term, long-term, workers' comp, they let you bill out at this higher extra rate, plus they let you bill out for mileage. And so what happens is we run this through a separate fund, but then at the end of the year when Bruce is all done, there's kind of this like little sum of extra money that's just accumulated because we can't actually charge all those things out to the grant. So because we've actually paid it from the budget, like workers comp and short term, long term and retirement, things like that, the auditors and I have agree agreed that we just dump that extra money back into the budget since it's already been charged out for those hours that are worked, if that makes sense. 
I'm not sure that makes sense, but it, 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 I could tell that it doesn't. Yeah, make sense, but um, it's because like I can't like when Bruce works doing that grant. That's um, he gets to bill himself out at a higher hourly rate. Right, I get that. Includes his like his beamers, but I can't charge his beamers to the grant. We mm -hmm. already pay for it from the budget. Right. So basically, is offsetting something that we've had to pay for through grant money. Mm -hmm. so okay. Budget money for it because we don't necessarily know how much money it will be, but it mm -hmm. helps offset it. So if beamers were to be over, we could look at that line and assume that that line would pick up some of that overage. So we're not really going to see it in the budget per se. You won't see it until the end of the year. And even that grant runs a little strange because it runs, oh, Bruce, what does it run? October to September? Is that? Yes, October to September. Mm -hmm. So by the time it finishes and gets wrapped up, it's usually, you know, it takes a se second to make sure everything sorts itself out uh, before I move that money in there. So the next line is fines. Um, we look like we're right about on going to be even with uh, by the end of this 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 budget seven thousand. So going to leave it the same for for next year or next budget. Um, services keep it the same. So Let's, Bruce, can you explain what's the difference between services and? Services is if somebody comes to the station for fingerprints and they don't live in the police district, we charge them for that. Okay. Uh, yeah. If they need a VIN verification and they don't live in the police district, there's a charge for that. Okay. Uh, most of that is. And I think uh, some of our, uh, if uh, an insurance company is asking for a copy of an accident report and they're giving us money for it, it, it goes in there as well. Okay. Those are that, that's, mm -hmm. that's what goes on that line. Okay. So. So oh, Bruce, I want to go back, go back just a second to the Mount Abe contract. Mm -hmm. I know we have a contract with them for last year. I mean, not that school's been totally in session. That's not going to affect your contracted amount, correct? They haven't tried no. to. No, we, we still, there's still calls for service uh, with the school running. Well, okay. the elementary school people are there. You know, the students are there all week. The mm -hmm. school, they have half at the half at a time. So yeah. we have calls for service that we are responding to, to include okay. truancy, which the truancy calls have gone up a little bit because of this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no, that that shouldn't be affected. Okay. Our police salaries should have gone down slightly because we have um, two police officers that are getting paid less than the previous officers that were there. And I will tell you that there's there was a little uh, going back and forth on the overtime rate, the part-time, as you know, the past couple of years, past couple of budgets, we've had people come and go. And so there was a period of time where we may not have filled the position immediately, but we had the money budgeted. So we went over in like the overtime, um, but we were under in the, the um, salaries. So I looked at this and I think we we've tweaked it where we should be, this should be good numbers or, you know, or they should be good numbers. So I don't know if anybody's got any questions about the salaries in any of those lines there. Okay. The uh, FICA that the is, is, um, determined by the salary, the amount. So those, because our uh, rate of pay for a couple of people have gone down, you'll see that those went down a little bit. I'll hopefully compensate for that. Um, the health insurance, we have two that are getting family plan and one that's getting a buyout. So I think I estimated um, when we we're talking with Jen, I estimated going with, if there was a 15% increase, um, I think the last year there was 12 or right around 12%. The year before may have been 11. So just being anticipating there might be, be um, a, a little more increase because of COVID and 
that's why I went with 15%. So the retirement uh, comes off from, or comes down a little bit because the overall salaries are coming down. Workers comp, that comes from somebody else that gives me that. Uh, same thing with disability insurance. So when we get down to uniforms, I did bump that up to 2,500 um, because we still have to, uh, the, the newer employees haven't got everything that um, they need for uniforms because we went over the previous budget. So I'm trying to, to make up for that. Um, the 4,800 for the actual for 20, that includes um, five new ballistic vests we will be getting some money back from the federal grant once that gets submitted. So we, we won't be having that much of an expense every year. That's uh, just happened to be the, uh, we needed to get five of them, so. How often do you have to replace them, Bruce? Five years, every five years. Unless one's used and then you have to replace it sooner. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, training left the same. A lot of our training we get through the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council, so it hasn't been costing us. But recently we've been reviewing and looking at some, some other training that we'd like to add. So I assure you that, that we will be using money out of that line this, this next budget. Mm -hmm. We just haven't settled on what we're going to, um, which new training that we're, uh, that we're going to implement. Uh, computer supplies, that's related to our licenses with um, our um, Axon cameras. And so that pretty much, that stays the same. Um, we decided to, because I confuse myself in between office supplies and general supplies, is to add those two lines together. And I think when we added them together, I added $50 to it. Mm -hmm. So there's a $50 increase between those. Um, vehicle gas and oil. I'm hoping we can stay the same. That's what the plan is. Advertising, I don't plan on doing any, so we eliminate that from the year before. Uh, vehicle maintenance, we've been right around, um, right around 50, uh, between 5,000 and 5,500, so I was gonna leave it at 55. Facilities expense, we expect an increase. Um, I think I figured a 2% increase on the actual rent. Um, and then we anticipated that um, the tax rate is going to go up, especially related to the school. So we're doing the best guess that we can for this, but I believe we can make it uh, with the 48,700. Now that facilities expense includes rent, utilities, the um, alarm system, uh, maintenance, so we have a cleaning um, once a week. And I think that's it. Hey, Jen, is it possible to break that out just so we can see that as opposed to in a note? It's it's right there. I don't know. No, if I, you... no I, can, I can see it in the note, but I was curious if we can just have it as lines or is it is that not, is it just easier to do it this way? Well, uh, the question, I guess, Jen, would be, is that all part of what we pay Kevin? Oh, okay. No, no this uh, is all related to also, the building. Okay. This is all the expenses for the building. So it's not yeah. all included just in the rent, then it, it is broken out. It's right, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah it, I, it would just be nice to see it as lines, because then if you we eventually move to a new facility, you just have, you can see those numbers there, as opposed to looking back and saying, oh, we spent this much when in reality it was that part of it was for utilities, part of it was for cleaning, stuff like that. So to have those as separate line items, if possible, it would be uh, be nice to see that. So utilities we pay we pay to Bristol Works. They they front the oh, okay. Bill. So that, that is included. So I guess the only thing would be so um that's the only reason so. we haven't ian but the you know once we do get a new facility we would break out obviously the electric and the fuel and the things okay like so yeah if most if most goes to bristol works then that's fine yeah okay so postage um i think i don't know why it's only 14 at the moment but um is the other 
few years, we've been 250, 270. So expecting that the potential for a slight increase in rates, I went with 300. For the communications, um, the communications includes our cell phones, our business phones at the office, and what we pay to the state for our email um, and other services with the state, which was, I think, uh, around 2,700 this past year. But they sent a letter around last year indicating that in 2022, we should expect to see a significant increase, but we don't know what it is yet. So I bumped that up to 4,500, hoping that that's enough to cover the significant increase when it comes to um, the services that the state bills us for. Um, they have said, and they continue to discuss at some point, they, they expect to be sending us a bill for dispatch services. There I was just going to ask you that. Did this include dispatching? No, that's no. We haven't got to that yet because they haven't figured out how they're going to start that. Mm -hmm. um, they're still in the discussion stage and trying to figure out how do they determine how much each agency pays. Do they do it by calls for service? Do they do it by agency size? That's, that's all still being worked on. So. That'll be interesting when they call to have you come and help them, whether they try to charge us for that or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're still working on things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why they haven't sent a bill yet because they can't figure it yeah. out. Uh, no. Well, and I think they've been talking about dispatching for a few years now. They've mm -hmm. been able to figure out how do they, how do they start billing and, you know, that, that to me, if the state has it on a state level, they should be that should be collected on a state level tax, not us adding more to ours. But that's mm -hmm. that's part of the discussion, I guess. Well, it's not it, it's not just you. It's it's EMS and fire as well. They're oh, they're yeah. still dispatching some of those, and they're trying to iron that out. So. Yeah, no, I get that, and you know, it, 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 we may end up if it's uh, too much of an expense talking to Shelburne because Shelburne already takes care of the fire and rescue, then maybe we can get a better deal by going through them when we get to that point. So, uh, so <laughs> the legal line, um, I'd really like to keep it at 2000, but <laughs> <laughs> we obviously didn't anticipate having to spend money, but we did. And because we ended up saving somewhere else, it really didn't have an overall big effect to the budget. Um, and usually if, if we are dealing with the legal line, it's dealing, we, we should be seeing some savings somewhere else in the budget. So um, unless somebody can you know, convince me otherwise, or if they wanna to add to it, I'd like to leave it at that. Uh, dues, uh, we've gone to, up to 400 dues include each officer. Um, um, it's $10 per person to be part of the Vermont Police Association. And then we also have the dues for the Chiefs of Police Association and dues for the um, a federal site where we get training. And, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it, but all of those combined is $400. $400. Bruce, is that also dues in there for, don't we pay the dues for the, the union guys? Here no, the union? no, this, this has nothing to do with the union. Okay. We don't pay, we don't pay anything to the right. union. police officers do. Okay. All right. Um, the next line, police insurance, that's something somebody worked out for me. I don't know all those numbers come from. Jan, is that liability, liability and... I think that's know, insurance on the building, isn't it? Building. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or things like that. Yes, I think it's, that's the insurance for vehicles and the building. And then I think up above workers comp kind of entails right. extra right. Yeah. other. Okay. So for capital vehicle, We've been at 12,500 for a few years. Um, I believe at some point we'll be 
moving to a um, hybrid vehicle, they cost more. And if that's the route that uh, it seems like we're all being encouraged to go towards, um, I think we should increase that. And um, so when the next vehicle, if we do decide to go with a hybrid, which is very likely, we'll have enough money to do it. Do you have a date for that, Bruce? Uh, no, uh, three years from now, because we okay. just purchased the vehicle. We do one every three years. Okay. So I figured if 2000, it gives us another 6,000. I think when I looked at these numbers, that was close. Okay. So we'll be closer with that than if we stay with the 12,500. Yeah. So the capital equipment, leave that the same. Miscellaneous, leave that the same. Bruce, can we go back up to, uh, sorry, I didn't ask earlier, the um, one for part-time help? Yes. The salary? The salary yeah. line? Yeah, salary line for part-time help. Yes. Um, so that's, um, we've now, we're up to the chief in two full times. That doesn't come out of there, I know. So that part-time could get us back to what we were past years, um, if we spent all that, we'd have enough help on that you're not working 60 hours, 70 hours a week, and we have an officer on most all the time, except when we go off at whatever time we, they go off. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, our, at, if you're looking at what we've spent so far for the current year, the current fiscal year for part-time, um, due to COVID, uh, one of our officers who teaches at the, the academy um, hasn't put in any hours in recent months because while he's teaching at the academy, they ask that he not be out for the potential for exposure. Um, so that, that's why when I was looking at this over the last three budgets, we have not had an entire budget where we've had the same people working. Um, so I was looking at how things fluctuated between the full-time salary, the part-time salary, and the overtime, and tried to keep everything within that total. Mm -hmm. um, but part of that, out of that part-time, if one of our officers, you had said, was supposedly, hopefully, going to go to the academy in January if they have another class, so you'll have to, I assume, more part-timers would be on to cover that shift? Yes. I would hope the part-timers would be there to help us fill the shifts. Okay. So is there, I guess, then is there enough there? Is he going to be gone, what, 16 weeks? Yeah, I, I believe there's enough uh, because if, if we have part-timers working, then we won't be using as much overtime. And if we, if we uh, did go over in the part-time and we were under in the overtime, then that area okay. is going to stay, you know, those, those three totals or the total of those three is going to be about the same. And once we have a full budget with people in the places that they're supposed to, we can then adjust those so those are um, more accurate okay. on what we spend. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce, you took out your advertising. Are you gonna need to advertise in, in your next budget year for positions, anything like that, do you think, in July? of next year you know we've we've been successful using the um the website at the uh, the academy and there's a couple other websites that you can put an ad on and not cost okay um, you know with it without paying um so i i haven't seen a huge benefit from advertising in the local paper for these types of positions okay yep just want to make sure But it looks good. That's a, uh, a nice number at the bottom there. Um, just a, one more question for you, Bruce. Go back to the vehicle maintenance. Yes. Now that we're gonna be taking delivery, we might have it already detailing it. The new cruiser and the first year, 
I would assume be some of it would be under warranty. Does it need to match what last year's budget? Could we shave 500 there? Just a question, really. I realize- No, you we have a, the one that we have is a 2018. Um, you know, we have to, uh, uh, you know, there's even some routine maintenance on that that might not be covered under warranty. Brakes aren't covered under warranty. Um, tires aren't covered under warranty. Um, and it seems like over the last few years, even though we've had new vehicles replacing the older ones, there's been expenses that come up. You want to shave 500? I don't have an issue with that, but it, I was no, just- No, I was just asking more asking yeah. question. Yeah, I was looking at the average over the last two years and we were, like I said, it was either 5,000 or 5,400. And I, I don't remember what the one was the year before that or the budget before that, I shouldn't say year. And then of course the, uh, the cost, the hourly rate for labor has gone up. Mm -hmm. Every year it goes up. Okay. Can Jen, can you look at Jessica's uh, chat? Yeah, I, sorry, I was trying to read it and I then I realized I was screen sharing. So then I was trying to, it's so the, this total isn't going to sum these. Uh, I'm pointing at my screen. How helpful is this? <laughs> you all can see me pointing and you can't see me pointing. Wow. Use your uh, mouse to point. Use your mouse to point. I know. Okay. So this, there we go. This number is just reflective of the line percentage total. So it's not gonna sum these numbers. And I think that answers her question, but I don't, I guess I don't quite, I wasn't, I was trying to figure it out, but I couldn't, I was trying to figure out what sum she was talking about. So I just, I it, don't. It was I just that for the percentage of the budget in that column, you have taxes at 41%. Mm -hmm. Then you have also the town contract at 41%. So you're already up to 82% of total revenues. So I was just saying that those didn't seem to make sense unless you're counting them in a different way. So if you look, so this is the budget for the year. So it's 41% of this year's collected budget is what that line refers to. So really, when you look at this total, we've only collected 39.4% of the revenue we anticipated for the year. So Jessica, that 41% 40, that is the percentage of that line. Right, right, okay, I, I understand. I thought it was of the total revenues. Yeah. No, sorry, I'm sorry for the confusion. And I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any other questions for Bruce or any comments on the budget? Down to the bottom, Bruce, under the, we talked about insurance. You said that was, um, the 11,000 figure that was for the vehicles and or the building or the equipment, okay. in the building, the, the, the insurance is a figure that comes from, um, from the, okay, Jennifer, I guess they just tell that. me that's our, our share of the insurance cost is that. So yeah. I'm sure it has to do with the, the, the vehicles, building, liability. I'm assuming it's all those. Yeah. But we, we can't insure the building, but we mustn't be insuring the contents. Because Correct. Kevin Maybe that's, the where contents. Was, that's where I was getting at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Anything else? I just, for comparison, because Valerie had put in this number before and then I think it changed. So I wanted you all, so at the, I keep going back and forth, sorry. Um, so this number right here that Valerie has made this nice little um, <coughs> formula for, that is the number that would be raised by taxes. So when you look at what you'd have to adjust your tax rate for just for, you know, comparative purposes, <coughs> not looking at that much of an adjustment. So kudos to Bruce, because right now we're at 4,000, or $403,020. And now we're going to be at 4,000, $403,900 something dollars. So you're looking at really a $900, you know, kind of change in the mm -hmm. tax rate. So just, I mean, that's probably as close to as level fund as you can get. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Just so you could see a comparison in that respect. Right, Jennifer, probably the, the village, the police district grand list is going to 
increase a little well yeah so i was looking at that today joel just to see what the tax rate would look like and because that potentially will grow a little bit you might not see a flat tax rate right okay good news won't know that for a little bit though <laughs> <laughs> it's true we won't know that but just for comparative purposes okay great nice job bruce and jen yeah thank you okay we good we can move on. I have a quick question. Go ahead, John. I just, it's more of a statement than a question. I just like to say that I think Bruce is doing a great job. No problems with the budget, except this one. Every taxpayer in Bristol should be supporting the Bristol Police Department. It's not the Bristol Village Police Department. It's the Bristol Police Department. And uh, I'd be really interested to see that happen i would hope the select board would take the lead in explaining that very difficult thorny issue to all the taxpayers outside the district but it really honestly it's time for the bristol police department to be paid for by everybody in bristol otherwise it should just become the bristol village police department we should drop an iron curtain around the village and call it a day um but that's not really realistic and nobody really wants that but uh i think um, you know, proposing changes in the future to the police department, like say building a building or something like that, uh, runs the risk of having opposition to um, policing, not on the quality of the policing, but on the budgetary burden of the policing. Um, I don't think anybody I've talked to has any problem with, uh, with the police department and Bruce's leadership is excellent. Um, uh, but I think that it's time for the town to deal with this question. And I understand on a political basis why that's hard for the select board to deal with. But honestly, really, who, can, who on the select board today would say that this situation is equitable, fair, or sustainable? Anybody? Thank I'm you. saying. I mean, I know they already went down that road, John, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's not to say that it can't be brought up again, but I know Bruce and Jen and them went went round and round with this two years ago. Was it two years ago, Jen? I think John was on that committee as well. Right. And yep. he was just as right. well. But I, I mean, I think the, the select board has to exert leadership here and say, all right, folks, we got a police department that is effectively serving the community, the whole community. And it's the Bristol Police Department, not the Bristol Village Police Department. And I think you got to say that it's equitable to have everybody support it. Everybody in town, all the taxpayers. And if, this, if a select board, I don't want to put it on you guys as individuals, it's an institutional issue. But if the select board doesn't deal with that um, in a way that you can shape the conversation and guide it, um, it there are going to be repercussions from that when people finally decide that uh, having the village subsidize everybody outside the village on police coverage is really um, not sustainable. And again, I don't think I don't think it's a, any. There's no issue whatsoever about the quality of policing. But uh, um, I, I just I don't see how this archaic leftover from the old village town dichotomy can survive today. How how is that mod? Any, in any way in comportment with us as a village, as a town rather, as a whole town that includes the village. It's not, it's a sore thumb sticking out and we gotta deal with it as a community. And the select board ought to lead that conversation, not ask people what they want, but point out the reality of what it is and suggest a way forward. And the way forward is have everybody pay for it. Because if you want to build a police station, you're going to get that conversation then. We're going to float a bond for a couple million bucks to build a police station. What do you think you're going to hear from the village taxpayers? Probably the same things you'd hear from the town, the town taxpayers. So, <laughs> Except the town taxpayers are getting services that they're not paying for. Anyway, we don't have to have that discussion now, but I right. just, I'm just flagging the issue. And this sure. is... For all the goodness and all the appreciation I have for the select boards in all their memberships over the years doing the hard work to run the town, and I do appreciate it, 
This is a sore thumb that's stuck out for too long and needs to be dealt with. Well, John, it has stuck out since the merger document in 93 that states that there was going to be an, ex an expansion of the police department. The entire town had to vote whether they were going to, mer to uh, expand the police department or there wouldn't have been a merger in 93 of the village and town services. I mean, what if, I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but what if somebody in the town went out and asked uh, village uh, police district taxpayers to abolish the police department because we don't want to pay for it anymore? The town people outside the district don't get to vote on that. What, what would happen if the village, God forbid, voted for that? Drive up Interstate 89 and ask the town of Waterbury. I, I have talked to people in Waterbury. I That's talked what to they did. Over. They're not happy with the circumstance right now. They uh, closed their police department. That's not a conversation for tonight. This is a budget. No, right. But it's anyway, I just flagging that. I mean, the longer that this goes out there with these $400,000 budgets paid for by 26% of the taxpayers or whatever it is, they're a minority of the taxpayers paying the vast majority of the police budget. I think it's just a loaded, it's getting more and more loaded every year. And and we ought to deal with it, grab it by the horns and deal with it. Thanks, that's all, I'll shut up. Duly noted. Thank you, John. Duly noted. Okay, all right. So we good with this, we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Folks wanna talk about uh, the uh, police uh, capital plan. Okay. It was included on the website. Yeah. yeah. And I can try to screen share here. Um, let's see. This is the Capital Cruiser plan? Right. Hmm. I, don't, I was going to say, I don't, I'm not sure that I remember seeing the Bristol. Yeah, it was there. That's okay. the only one I didn't open. <laughs> yeah, so this will. This is pulled from the annual report, at least the one that you share, right. Val, and it's, it's right. with that with that change in the appropriation. Right. So yeah, we need it'll to it'll it'll bump a little bit in terms of right. what we're the numbers on there. Right. So this will be changed to to fifteen. Yeah. And we'll add another column here. Now some of the assumptions. Um. Bruce, just for easy figuring, what she's showing us there with that cruiser of this year, 2021, 37,000. Did were we, we were pretty close to that, weren't you? It was 35 or 34, nine. I think it was 34. Unmute yeah. yourself, Bruce. Sorry, I forgot about that. The cruiser <laughs> is 34,200, but that doesn't include, um, we are trying to reuse equipment that we can reuse, but some of it can't be used. So if we had to replace everything, I believe it was um, $6,000. So we would be at $40,000 if we had to do everything new. Hmm. And you can only reuse the equipment a couple of times, yeah. then it becomes either uh, not uh, functional anymore, or if you have a different vehicle, the, the dimensions or something might change where some of that equipment can't be reused. Would that this fund or the cap the your equipment fund? This fund, the ve the vehicle equipment we do of the the uh, this fund. Okay. Because it's related to the vehicle. So that twelve five will go up obviously to fifteen, and that thirty nine thousand will change maybe to forty five or something because of the maybe a hybrid. Correct. Is that correct? I'm saying yes. And and the other cruiser has not been sold yet. Is that no. right? No. Okay. All right. And when it when that does get sold, the the plan is for the proceeds, whatever that is, would go into this fund as a revenue. Into this fund, yes. Any yeah. equipment, any equipment that's no longer being used or can't be reused, if we sell it off the vehicles, it goes into this fund. Okay. Bruce, with regard to the hybrid option, obviously. Their savings uh, and, and longevity, but have you? Are there any calculated numbers out there in terms of savings and gas and things like that? You said that other other departments, or this, this seems to be the way that people are going. Do you have any information about that? 
I don't have any, I didn't uh, look at the numbers that closely. Okay. Is there any department that currently has a hybrid? That was my question. In this area, I'm not sure. I, I was so wondering how, I how- Montpelier has one. Who did? Montpelier, I believe, has one. Bought it last year. I thought I heard that on the news. I don't, oh. I can't swear to it. I'd be curious to how the functionality of it works compared to the gas models. Like when you want to step on the gas to go, does it have the power to do that? And yeah, that'd be interesting to see those stats. Well, we've got three years to work on that. <laughs> right. And I, right. And, and I didn't want to be the first to buy the vehicle. I wanted to somebody else to do that so we can learn from their their experiences. Mm. Right. And also and lots of changes. Yeah. Luck and change in three years too. Yes, true. Absolutely. Okay. Any question? Any other questions about this? Great. Okay. Do we want to look over the highway or? Well, oh, Eric's not here. Or do we want to wait till he's here? Um. Let's see. I don't think the plan has changed any. No. Um, I mean, did. I had a question on the, the plan. When I was looking at it, we have um, just in 2024, we are planning on buying a new excavator. And is it real? I mean, we currently have a price of 125000 And I'm trying to figure out if that's realistic when we bought a grader for 160 this year. 360. Two, two. Uh, yeah. Is. No, excavators are it. It's smaller, and it is less expensive. I don't know that one twenty five. Uh, I'm not sure if that's close or not. Mm -hmm. Eric would know because Starksville just bought one. Okay. I was, well, he just, and I, I was looking at the numbers, going, "Wow, is that really going to be true when I, we get to that year?" Right. But but right now we are a hundred. We're in the negative of 103,000 Butler. Is that correct? Um, Top line equipment. In 2020, 2020, 2021, we're at 44. You are, but you're, you've, you've leased the, the new truck for 103,000. So you're, I think we need to, yeah. I mean, I think Wait a te while. technically we've, there's some money in there, but it's just not enough to pay for the balance of that new truck. So that new truck will get, that balance will get paid next year. But there's a note there, there's a note there saying that. Purchase pending, yes. No, it doesn't say purchase pending. This says balance on replacement. Replacement. I'm replaced the international truck. Yes, I don't have this. Yeah, it's right in the middle, Joel. Right in the middle of the page. Yeah. I mean, it's it's looked like we to me it, we haven't been sticking to this because yeah, the grader we traded a year early. Then we traded this village truck or the, the district truck a year earlier. And but now it looks like we're taking a year. We're we're going to pay that this year, and then next year we'll take the year off. The following year will take the year off anything. Right. And everything should be, as of right now, everything seems to be in, in good enough shape to do that. Yeah. And I I like to see the truck the equipment committee reevaluate that loader and excavator hmm. for the possibility of maybe pushing those over one more year out. I met with Eric this afternoon and we looked this over and he feels strongly, at least today, that um, that the loader is a high priority for uh, 2024. And that he would be very concerned about having it pushed out further. He also said that if there's money in the 2023 uh, budget uh, available, uh, he, he would like to have the uh, the pickup truck replaced. Wants to have that on the radar. What pickup truck? The one he drives? The Ford, yeah. The, the, water water truck. Truck. the old water truck. Yeah. 
And he, originally he was thinking of a, a, a 450, but now he thinks a, a 350 would be fine. Yeah, he talked with me about that yesterday afternoon over there. Yeah. And I think he estimated $45,000. He, he, really he didn't have with a plow and sand, He wants a plow and sander on it. I'm sure yeah. he's yeah. a lot for that. So it's going to be more than that then? <laughs> I think it's going to be in the fifty five dollars to $60,000 range. Mm. Yeah, closer to 70, I'd say. Yeah, Come you're probably on. right, Peter. <laughs> plow and sanders, plow and sander is going to cost you 15000 and we still want to buy a plow for the uh, a V plow that scoops for the sidewalk. Sidewalk sander. Yeah. Sidewalk sander. So, do we have a priority list from from for this kind of thing? Well, that's what this list is supposed to be, Darla, but it hasn't okay. been working. <laughs> Apparently, okay. there are there is need to uh, um, the committee needs to reevaluate. Yeah. Got it. That's that's probably a good suggestion to have this uh, go to yeah. the committee, and then mm -hmm. to look at this again in early January. And mm -hmm. also, there's the report. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission had done the capital plan report uh, last yeah. October, I think it was, and uh, and there's some equipment recommendations in there too. I mean, uh, the equipment committee is going to be meeting. In Eric's notes here, uh, the pumper to go out. Mm -hmm. Before it goes out to bid, it's going to have the equipment committee look it over. Might be so they don't. Those guys, I don't want to ask a lot of their time every different night. Right. They really look at the, the loader and excavator and say, you know, you know, peakers on that committee and say, you know, there's not a lot of hours on one or the other, and we need to push maybe push one of them out. And peaker knows you can pick up the phone and have a loader up here and probably in eight hours for rental if it Mars went down. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but you push. I'm worried push about we keep, we keep we keep we we're we're overspending it, um, and it started with a greater. And I got that. I voted for that because we that that motor was about ready to go. That was a good move. But then we then the 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 truck. You know, hindsight twenty twenty. You know, this board voted. The truck committee voted to put twenty thousand into a new motor in that truck. We put twenty two thousand in it. Never put a new motor in it. And now we're selling it. And that was the mistake was right there. And no, the new motor was 30 something thousand. 27, but then J and B was 22. Clark's was 27. And they decided not to run to the bridge now. Matt so. never went back to the yeah. either. I mean, the problem is you push things out and then you're pushing other things out. And do we get into the do we get into the same position we're in now where we're we're then spending a year early because something's breaking down. I mean, so right. I guess the committee has to really look at this. Who knows? Right. Yeah. What the heck I wonder about at. maintenance costs. Are we paying for, you know, are we paying for things in a maintenance line that, that could go into this fund? You know what I mean? Are we just paying for it somewhere else? Yeah. I've we been in a position myself putting off buying a new car for a while, right. but I am making that payment in a, in a maintenance fee. So. I mean, there's a, there's well, a, that's quite a, that's why they were flopped is because we were we were dumping money into maintenance and and we figured we were further ahead to go this route and i mean there's a excavator uh, that runs almost 10 months of the year uh, nine months of the year 10 hours a day up in a pit up on hard gravel road a lot more miles than our excavators got in it and and i had bigger i realized it's a much bigger machine but i mean i think i need to evaluate that too and say I'd like to have the truck committee, the equipment committee, take a look, hard look at those that loader and excavator and say, thank you with, with some, uh, you know, just be careful with it. I think you could get two more years out. Maybe you can't. If it comes back to bite us, it bites us. But I think we need to get this. Look at that for the next three years. We're always in the minus. And that bothers me. I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're where, I, where you're, I don't, yeah, I don't know where you're sorry, where sorry, those no, are costs, those, those are, are those cost. expenses, those are cost, yeah. those are cost. right, I mean, the closing balance is all, all plus, yeah, but, and I still think, I still think it needs to be reevaluated to make sure we're still on track, and we're still going to have the money to buy whatever we need to buy, mm -hmm. so, 
Okay. okay. We'll plan on that. All right. Uh, anything else that we have to look at under budgets? I know we have um, Brett's plan. Yeah, Brett. You want to go through that? Can we talk? I've got this here, you know, the printout you gave us, Valerie. The sidewalks, it says Main Street obligation. We have a balance there of 66401. Is that correct? And what was our, what did we end up, or have we got all our bills yet for Main Street? We haven't gotten that. We don't have that yet. You're going to have them done before October 2019's FEMA money yet? Or, we, I mean, we're 14, 15 months and we still haven't got that grant done, right? That FEMA money that we put in for in October of 2019. Mm -hmm. We got, where were we at with that? Uh, Eric and Sharon are in the final stretch of completing the uh, the, the uh, damage descriptions to upload to the FEMA website, but it's just been a, a challenging time of year for both of them. Is but that, the, the bulk of it's done. Was that FEMA out of, because there was a, in the pay orders tonight, there's a 30 odd thousand dollar bill for parents. Does that come out of that FEMA? No, that's different. That's the uh, the Lewis Creek stream bank repair, and that's paid for out of the uh, emergency watershed protection program, seventy five percent, and uh, twenty five percent by the property owner. Okay, all right. And as soon as we get the check, uh, as soon as I get the, the the documentation that we've paid this parent bill, then I can submit the reimbursement to the uh, funding agency. So, are we going to have any money in that sidewalk line to do any money? Uh, sidewalks in the spring and summer of 2021? That um, is going to be up to the select board because when we find out what the uh, the final costs for the Main Street project, then we need to decide which accounts are going to pay for which parts. Uh, we talked about uh, using some of the Stony Hill proceeds, which are undesignated funds. Um, and potentially capital roads if, if that's uh, an option and just different sections of the project. So we don't necessarily need to spend all of the sidewalk funds on that project. Right, okay. I, I, I've been nagging the VTrans folks to get me this information and uh, I'm not sure what the holdup is. Maybe it's just a bad time of year for them, but uh, uh, I hope and I expect to have that wrapped up by early January. I guess on the, I would be um, wouldn't want to take it out of Capitol Roads because we've got enough. Right. That, yeah, that's that's pretty thin. You know, the slide up still up in the upper notch. Right. Uh, in Basin Street or the, in, in Briggs Hill now. So I wouldn't want to take to do sidewalks. I wouldn't want to take it out of Capitol Roads myself. Right. Um, one thing we should add to this table is uh, the police equipment line, or unless that's a different, this is all, um, it'd be good to see what the balance is on that. Yeah, sorry, that just got omitted accidentally. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay, do we wanna talk about the fire capital plan? Is everybody good with that? And Brett, do you want to jump in? Brett, I um, I can make I can. Uh, do you want to share your screen, Brett? Brett, we can't hear you. <laughs> Hmm. He's on his phone, so he might need the but whatever the button is to unmute himself. But I can't remember if it what star or something. Star, or? star six. Star six. <laughs> Look at bigger. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. <laughs> How about now? Yeah. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Zoom. Zoom wanted me to push star six. So. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I can uh, I can certainly share my screen. Yeah, I'm co-host. Mm. 
You guys see that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So um, my assumption is you've all had an opportunity to review this. Um, yep. This is what I submitted to Valerie last week. Um, so this is the fire. There's two sheets on this uh, Excel spreadsheet. The first one is the capital equipment. Uh, so we're not talking about vehicles. We're talking about equipment only at this time. Um, with uh, the receipt of the assistance, the firefighter grant, um, this capital plan looks very different. Um, and as you can see, I highlighted in red what I brought up to you folks last week, and you weren't quite, quite sure what uh, what you were able to do as a board if it needed to go before the taxpayers uh, regarding an ask uh, to move next uh, fiscal year $75,000 of the already allocated equipment funding to the apparatus uh, capital plan to make up a shortfall we will have uh, in the purchase of the new pumper. So that's just, I put that in there. I wanted to highlight it. Obviously, I, I don't know what you folks need to do, but that's, that's what the ask is in this current plan. So this entire plan is built around the assumption that that $75,000 will be moved over. And obviously if it doesn't, then we end up with a, uh, a larger surplus of funds in this, uh, in this account. But, uh, so again, back to the assistance to firefighter grant, not only was there a significant amount of money allocated for that purchase next fiscal year, but in the, uh, the years following, the, because we had been buying SD self-contained breathing apparatus kind of on a cycle, you know, a couple here, a couple there, uh, the air bottles that go on them, which have a shelf life of 15 years. So there was a lot of replacement costs built into this capital plan which you don't no longer see, at least for, uh, for the next you know, 12 years in this plan, um, because the, we purchased all new SCBA units. So the idea is, and you know, probably, hopefully not for 12 or 15 years, we won't be replacing those things again. Uh, and we'll do it all at one time. And that way you have uh, units that are all identical and compatible with one another, unlike today. Um, I, do you guys have questions about the specific items in the descriptions? I have two uh, questions. One thing it is worth, yeah, please go ahead, Michelle. Um, the, the, pump, the ladders and that, didn't we, are these different ladders? Because I thought we had bought new ladders or replaced a couple ladders not too long ago. Yeah, so uh, two or three years ago now, uh, you folks allocated, well, it was in the capital fund. We switched some things around and we had to purchase a new 35 foot extension ladder, okay. which is on on Bristol's engine ones. And that 35 foot extension ladder the town purchased two or three years ago will go on your new pumper. Okay. These are ladders in addition to, uh, because we're adding more ladders to this truck. Okay. That's, that's why you see a 24 foot ladder on there instead of only having one. And, and there is, Michelle, there is a chance we currently have a 14 foot roof ladder uh, in service and I mean it, we're not talking about a lot of money this 14 right. foot ladder you know probably three hundred dollars but anyway uh, if that passes uh, its annual test there's no reason why that 14 foot ladder couldn't be transferred to the new vehicle as well but I think as I've expressed all along in these plans that you know I started six years ago that uh, it's just because you buy a new truck doesn't mean you got to buy all new equipment to put on it it makes no sense at all Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've been making responsible purchases over the year, uh, as things begin to fail, uh, you know, we, we, uh, eye them and we make sure there's money put aside for them. But, uh, the items you see here are the items that would be needed to out, to help outfit, complement the equipment we already have on the new, uh, new pumper. Okay. Um, my second question has to do with your extrication tools. I see you're replacing them in 2020. 24, 25, and then again in 2930, do they only last five years or do they just get- No, added? it's, we have two, two complete sets of these tools, okay. Michelle. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, the first, the first set, and you know what, you know, some of this stuff, I hate to use the word gamble, but you know, you really don't know. Um, you know, we, we're very good about servicing our equipment annually, 
but we still need to plan for the what ifs. Um, so it's certainly, you know, we don't like to replace stuff just for the sake of replacing it. But uh, if you look at uh, 22, 23, you know, this is becoming very real about our Cascade air filling station, the, the, mm -hmm. the uh, system that puts air into the bottles we breathe, um, you know, like our current 1997 pumper, you know, where it's getting difficult to find parts for it. Well, you can't get parts for our Cascade system anymore. And it's, it's on its last leg, as it, the uh, technician just told us. So this was something in the, the plan that was in last year's town report. This particular purchase was uh, set for 25 to 26. Yeah. But again, you know, with the success of the AFG grant, we're able to reprioritize and move that up, um, mm -hmm. if, obviously, if approved. So that's just a significant change. And uh, it's kind of a, I look at it as a living document. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all my questions. <clears throat> and Anybody? also, I think just worth noting, it, uh, in last year's report and the town plan, it was actually showed in 2021, but we didn't vote it. Uh, the town didn't vote a $30,000 annual appropriation because um, it went to 30,000 and then it moved to 35,000 in 25, 26. But again, just looking ahead and some successes we've had with grants, you know, through the next 12 years, we're looking at being able to level fund that account. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. Any more, any more questions on the capital equipment plan? So you, Not all right, you the have, apparatus. Yes. Brett, you have for like replacing fire service radios and replacing this is in the, the first line the thermal imaging cameras with the ones that you're replacing are can you get money for them or are they just done for their nope. lifespan that's that's an excellent question and that's another item the thermal imaging cameras ian is referencing those in last year's plan uh the next one i don't think was scheduled to be replaced until the same year as the pumper no the year after the pumper 22 23 but the two MSA thermal imaging cameras that were purchased with Homeland Security money immediately following 9-11 uh, are no longer reliable. Uh, they, okay. they don't work most of the time when you need them. And it's a, it's a life-saving tool. Um, so right. actually just the last few weeks we've had vendors in, uh, we've been following the governor's guidance, but uh, we've been able to get some demos in the, uh, uh, vendors actually left the cameras with us one an MSA similar to the one we have today just uh, 20 years newer and then a, a different brand and we have been able to take them on our calls with us most recently most recently to a chimney fire on Friday so the firefighters got to use these out in the field to see how they will react to the elements as it was very cold that morning um, but just how they work, how they fit in their hand, because they're different designs, the quality of the resolution, et cetera. But, uh, so yeah, okay. thermal imaging cameras, they are definitely pretty much done. Okay, it's not something like, I know with, when I was on the energy committee, there was always interest in the, that kind of technology to be able to look at um, houses and, and efficiency. And I didn't know if they could uh -huh. be repurposed for that, given that it doesn't need to be an emergency or a life-saving situation. Yeah. But is it accurate enough to actually show, you know, the the leakage of of heat from houses that haven't been uh, insulated properly or older ones versus newer ones? So I'm just curious about that. Maybe that's well, a conversation. So you I never answered your question, Ian. Yeah, I never answered your question. I'm sorry. So <laughs> the the company, the vendor, will buy them back if okay for. Uh, up to, uh, I think it's $750 per camera they will give okay. us. Um, because obviously if, if we go, if the fire department was to go in a different direction with a new vendor, you know, a different brand, which based on the feedback we've received, that is certainly the, the preference. And obviously that vendor, it's in their best interest to remove the other ones, you know, from the field. Right. Um, those are very expensive items to service. Uh, I'm sure Peeker can recall um, that uh, when you send one of those away to Pennsylvania to the factory, you know, it's nothing to get a $6,000 invoice <laughs> to repair one of them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. That's a good word for it. Ridiculous. So 
But certainly, okay. if, if uh, the the, the uh, energy committee would like to look at them, I mean, they certainly could be, uh, you know, evaluated. Right. Something to consider if you want okay. to repurpose them. Yeah. Yeah. I was just piece curious. of town equipment. Right. Okay. Great. Nice. Any question. other? Yeah. Any other questions on uh, equipment? If not, I'll move over to the apparatus tab. Go ahead. Sounds good. Okay. Um, yeah. So you'll note uh, under FY 2122, uh, this line obviously lines up on the equipment side uh, as far as the equipment for this vehicle. And again, highlighted in red, it shows if, if approved uh, by either the board or the taxpayers, whatever that looks like, that's this $85,000 right here, that the $75,000 is part of that. Okay. So and the 10,000 is, you know, anticipated revenue from the sale of the 97 pumper. But I have to be honest with you folks, I'm really, I'm struggling with the cost of these 20 year old vehicles, you know, what their resale value is, because to my surprise, I'm not sure if Valley's had an opportunity to share it with you folks, but you know, that utility truck um, the town is selling is currently posted for $55,000. And that's based on similar vehicles, similar year and prices on them. I mean, not saying we're gonna get $55,000 for it, but it's a lot more than I think the 10,000 I originally anticipated. So I so that's, think that's great news. You know, we have a potential here to put a little bit more money back into this fund than we originally thought, but I guess that's yet to be determined. Right. But yeah, that truck is currently listed on the website. I, I sent that information to to Val, to to Jen, and to uh, Sharon because I guess you guys post opportunities on the website, is that right? Something like that. Yes, it is. Sorry, I'm nodding, okay. but I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, folks have that now. Um, and again, with with this fund, uh, you know, currently we are receiving an annual appropriation of one hundred thousand um, dollars. And if you just look down the line here, um, the price of these vehicles, it's, it's just it's just hard to wrap my head around. It really is. You know, these aren't made up numbers. You know, the work that uh, Deputy Chief Foreign, who I believe is still on the phone, um, the work his working group has been doing uh, all of last year or all this year, excuse me, um, and continues to do as they get ready to put this thing out to bid after a meeting with the town. Um, you know, those are the prices we're hearing. You know, could even be a few dollars more. And uh, but that's that's reality for fire protection for a new pumper. You know, but like I said on the equipment plan, I think it's important to note that this too is a living document because if you look a little further down to fiscal year 3031, you're seeing the replacement of uh, the town's uh, 2007 Spartan pumper tanker truck. Well, you know, that truck uh, is going to be about 24 years old uh, at that time. Well, the truck we're, we've uh, our frontline pumper today is 23 years old, and if you're familiar with it, it, it's cost a tremendous amount of money to keep that vehicle on the road the last five years. Speaking about the one that's uh, to be replaced in 3031, in calendar year 2020, uh, the town has spent $27,000 in maintenance on that vehicle. So they're not only expensive to buy, but they're expensive to maintain. So it's you know, back to what Joel was kind of talking about with town equipment, you know, can you get another year or two out of it? Oh, well, there's always that risk. And, you know, when we're, I don't want to say expected, but when we're trying to be fiscally responsible and, you know, maximize the life of these vehicles, you know, you like to think you could get 20 years out of them. Um, but, you know, we've, I think we've really, in the last six years, really made the investment and we're, we're catching up. So I think we're just paying for lack of maintenance previously. And that is, I don't say that with any disrespect to anyone, just meaning these vehicles are being serviced by uh, folks who uh, work on these big trucks. You know, that's what they do. We, we have to do more than just change the oil in 20 years. You know, you can't, you got to do a little bit more than that. And so we're, we're playing catch up still. Um, but I think in the long run, we'll be better off. You know, the, the annual appropriation in the operating budget you folks have permitted for expenses to maintenance has is 
for the most part, been right on target. Yeah, we've gone over a few years. We've gone over already this year a little bit, but uh, hopefully we don't have any other disasters between now and June 30th. Um, but again, back to the living document piece. So that 3031 purchase of that pumper tanker, well, you know what? You know, maybe in two or three years or in three years, we, we need to look at those other vehicles, that heavy rescue truck and that, that 1994 mini pumper. And like, hmm, boy, maybe those can slide a little bit longer and we bump up the priority of this tanker truck because it's costing the town so much money. Um, and I'm very open to that. Uh, I, I hate to say this is just, this is in stone because it's not by any means. And again, as we talk about vehicles, we talk about consolidation. You know, that's one of my goals is to continue consolidating vehicles. We can do more with less when it comes to our vehicles. It means we have to change how we do our operations, uh, which is not a bad thing, but uh, you know, there's the potential to combine this heavy rescue truck and a mini pumper type truck into one vehicle. You know, instead of having one for each, you have to look at the frequency these vehicles are used. How often are they going out the door? So ma let's maximize the use of each rescue vehicle and let's make them work for us <laughs> and for the types of calls for service that we respond to for the town. So, all right, I've run my mouth enough. Questions? <laughs> uh, Brett, Joel here. Um, yeah. The, um, I mean, I think you're, spot on and this coming year that truck will be you are hoping to order it by march town meeting and have it here by april of may april of the following year at six hundred twenty-five thousand. and i don't deny that that's probably going to be right around what you're thinking is but my question is nine more years later you're going to buy a truck that's even bigger than this one i.e for the general public it's a tandem because it holds three thousand gallons of water versus a thousand dollars thousand gallons of water on the new one that's going to be ordered here pretty soon is seven i don't think seven hundred thousand is enough i hate to say that but i don't think it's enough in nine years yeah and you, you're probably you're probably right joel you know? help me out with and that if if this truck's going to come i get numbers five i get numbers based on the cost of other new vehicles and yes you have that increase each and every year um but yeah it's looking that far ahead on one of these custom vehicles it's, it's really it's, hard when you don't have a crystal ball, but you know, you're probably looking at more than that, which obviously pushes it out even further unless the town wanted to allocate even more funds towards their fire trucks. So that's the, that's the trade-off. Right. I mean, I think if we, yep. this new one that's about ready to go out, if they just change two things, well, it's two big changes and I'm not, I don't, we don't need it now to a 3,000 gallon tank to hold that much water in a tandem, I think you'd be close to your 30, 31 price right now. So I, I just don't, yes. I think you're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 850 probably. Yeah. I mean, well, I we can certainly revisit that number, yeah. um, but for our immediate future, we do have a very a big expense that's been planned for, it's coming up. I say plan for, we're obviously asking to make a modification to our two plans in order to make up a shortfall. Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, the, re the planning we've done for the past six years, to me, it's like it's now all coming uh, to fruition. I just, the fact that we have money sitting aside to purchase a fire truck and not have to bond for it. So I'm just really excited about that. It should be the first time in history. So is the rest of the taxpayers. <laughs> <laughs> so Val, That's with that, incredible. with with Brett's request of the seventy-five, is that a voter approval to move that, or is select board? It's my understanding that the select board has the authority to make those adjustments. She says that hesitantly. I know. I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this is mm, something from one one reserve fund to another reserve fund. Yeah. I mean, the the board, the public has already approved the funds into a capital fund. So it's just really a matter of moving it from one to another. And well, one question I had is the equipment, I mean, is there equi equipment on the truck that would have otherwise qualified to be purchased with that equipment fund? That's all, he, he's got that all spelled out, the ladders, the nozzles, all the, it's not part of the actual, everything that's not part of the actual truck, he's got split off 
and and for right. prior to the seventy five yeah, thousand passing mm -hmm. the train. Yeah, we wanted to avoid including equipment costs, you know, uh, mm. things that aren't like Peter said, a part of the vehicle and the see. actual capital apparatus plan, you know, that's just the cost of the vehicle. Um, I'm going to step back to what I just said. And um, I think it would be worthwhile to put it on the warning for voter approval. And I don't see a problem with with the voters moving it, but I I, I don't think that we can just do it. Yeah, I, mean, I, we, agree. I agree. We can we can spend the money without voter approval. We right. can spend money to buy the truck without voter approval because we have a a plan. Right. But I don't think we can move money from one to the other um, without without voter approval. But I agree. Val, yep. I'm not saying yep. I care one way or the other, but Val, isn't this similar to the undesignated fund balance? Where well, that, that's actually what I was thinking. Board? That's what I was thinking of when I said that the select board uh, had the authority to spend it. Uh, but this is different than an undesignated uh, okay. undes undesignated fund balance. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, it goes it goes on the warning. It goes as, as a warning, yeah. And, and yeah, I don't yeah. see a problem <laughs> with it, but I just, you know. I, I, I don't think we have the ability to do it without asking the voters. Yeah. Okay. Now, and especially with the clarification that there is no equipment on the truck that that this equipment fund would be offsetting to, to you know to contribute toward the purchase price. No, it's different. Yeah. So it goes on the morning. Well, there well, we go. Wait a minute. He like right, plan. did have some equipment that you're going to like. A 14 foot and a 16 foot rough ladder and a 10 foot ladder. $25,000, Joel. It's, he's got it spelled out. $25,000 and he's asking to move 75. So it means $100,000 coming out of the equipment, out of the right. equipment right. line. Vehicle, yes, the equipment line, fire equipment. Right. But yeah, we only have get to an ask opportunity. To move, we only have to ask to move 75,000. Right. Correct, Joel. Correct. The rest of that stuff, twenty five thousand can come right out of that equipment because it is equipment, not a vehicle. Correct. Correct. Yep. Any other questions I can answer for anyone on these these two separate plans? Which the equipment plan, especially, looks very different than the one that was in last year's town report. Really, no no new pieces of equipment, just rearranged and some of them reprioritized that needed to be bumped up um, ahead of other things. So then again, the apparatus, uh, I'm sorry, right, I, right. I, I just would want to put something in your hat to think about, you know, you were talking about yeah. your equipment fund and keeping it down at 25, you know, maybe on the same vein on the warning, you maybe put that, that difference in the, the, apparatus fund if we're in, if we think we're going to be short i mean granted it's not a lot but every little bit's going to help yeah well you, i mean it is a few years out and actually i'm looking back at last year's uh, uh, last year's apparatus fund that was in the town report no i got the same year so you can see in 24 25 i mean the ask is for 115 Right. Um, then it was, but you know, maybe that's too far out. You know, Michelle, it's, this is where I have a difficult time being a true department head. You know, when we're <laughs> just, when we're talking about these types of dollars, um, I, I want to be responsible and I don't want to shortchange us, you know, but if, if the board is looking at numbers and, and are thinking to themselves, well, you know, there's going to be a shortfall here, then it's certainly worth a discussion. Right. Um, but you know, we, we have the pace of this fund because it had to, it grew very quickly. You know, it went the first two years with the two cents on the tax rate, which Jen, correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, I think that was around 57, maybe $60,000 annually. And, right. you know, we, we noticed right off, this just isn't going to do it. And so then it went, I think, to 75, 
then to 90 and you know here we are at 100. Yeah. So we ended up taking the bond money. Once the bond was paid off, we took that money and put, yeah. you know, so that yeah, made That's right. That was $30,000. Yeah. So so we went, Yeah. That money that was in the, the fire department operating budget, uh, right, essentially you repurposed that money to right. the apparatus fund. Yep. Correct. Yep. I have another question, Brett. Yes. Um, you talked about looking in the future, looking forward, um, the potential to combine vehicles. Is that something that you're, uh, that you and Eric look at? Uh, in a, yes. in a serious way in it's, terms it, of what I, you actually need? Look at research on, you know, just online research. Yes, yeah, certainly we, we've crossed paths in our experience and our travels that, you know, vehicles, it's, it's not uncommon. Uh, I mean, if it wasn't for uh, the 1997 being in such disrepair and having it cost so much, you know, that vehicle wasn't even supposed to be replaced right now. We were uh, originally going to replace our utility truck that's currently for sale and our heavy rescue vehicle and combine them into one vehicle. That was the plan. Um, but obviously we had to reprioritize with the cost of the engine. Um, but again, just looking down the road, you know, uh, that heavy, or excuse me, that mini pumper truck, it has a, a hose reel on the back that carries large diameter hose. And, you know, if, if we decided as a, as a department um, down the road, you know, to shift our mentality when it comes to water supply, uh, needs, you know, we wouldn't need a vehicle that car has this large reel on it um, to carry five inch hose because if we used four inch hose, we could, uh, you know, bed that by hand. Right. Um, so you give yourself an opportunity to potentially combine a vehicle. And these are, these are just brainstorming sessions. I'm, I'm sure my uncle Joel's skin is crawling right now. I'm even talking about getting rid of that reel on that truck. But, you know, I just, I think we have a responsibility to proactively look at, you know, what does the future look like at the fire service? And it is, it's changing. And right. I like to think I'm a leader in the fire service when it comes to change, because those who aren't willing to change are gonna get left behind. That's reality. Okay, that's good to know. Brad, a question for you on your $85,000 revenue from the apparatus for the 93. I got on fire tech and I've looked at 97s and 95s here, and you know they're 39, 40, 45 thousand dollars. I'm I'm wondering if that 85. I know what the Gens sold their pumper to Salisbury for. I I'm wondering if that 85 is. I'd like to get 80. Would be 100. No, I would think. That what you're saying? I'm thinking Joel, maybe 50 thousand. Joel. Oh. Part of that 85 is a 75 thousand dollar transfer. So. Right. To, Brent, uh, right. Brett's only looking at $10,000. So anything oh, above and beyond. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm plug. seeing words on top yep. of it. it says revenue from an apparatus sale, Michelle. Right. But he's, he yeah. explained to us that it included the $75,000 transfer. I was turning my back. Yeah. I thought I didn't explain that well. So in the, under equipment description, Joel, you'll see okay. highlighted in red that yeah, $75,000 trans. Okay. So, but what you're saying though, I mean, actually what you're saying is that number, that 85 could potentially be more like 100 or 110 if we were able to get more for the 97 than we think we can. You know, these numbers we are from the mechanics who work on them, uh, yep. you know, KME or over in Latham, New York, you know, when they say things like, yeah, you'll be lucky if you get $10,000 for it. Well, you'd like to think they know what they're talking about, but yep. you know, no, maybe we'll be surprised. I thought you were, were thinking that you were going to get 85 just for the truck. No. If, if I thought I was going to get 85 for the truck, we wouldn't be selling it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we good? Okay. Thank you, Brett. All right. Thanks, Brett. May, Thank may you, I Eric. just one more question, Michelle, if I may? Sure. Um, so obviously these, these plan, this plan, these plans that have modifications to them now, now, those modifications, even in our current fiscal year, will those not take effect until after town meeting? An example, thermal imaging camera, you know, reprioritized, bumped it up. It's now showing in the current fiscal year. Am I allowed to come to the board this 
fiscal year and ask with quotes to make such a purchase? As long as yeah. the money's in your budget, Brett, I think you can ask or whatever. I mean, what you put in there is just an idea of what you're going to be looking at, but the money's in there, then I think you can come to the board and ask. It's a planning tool. Great. Yeah, it's absolutely. A, and it, it helps. It's the best guess for what you're going to need. And if you actually need something else and you, you can reprioritize, then so be it. I mean, we didn't know six months ago we were going to get $120,000, $135,000 for air packs. I mean, what an impact that's had on our plan. So, I think, it, I think it's important to know what you, said, what you said earlier, Brett, when this is a living document. So things, your, your horizon has changed. So I think the idea that you have the funds there and you, and you can utilize them in a different way, it seems yeah. like the way to go. Is no, it, it is, like Gallagher said, it's a great planning tool just to be able to look at it and just helps you look down the road and, and plan. So I guess that's what I do for a living, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you good? I'm all, right. all good. Thank you, folks, very much. Perfect. Then while Thank we're you. on this topic, I, let's have Eric jump in here and talk about the... Wait, do you need to vote on that for the moving the money, put it on the ballot or no? That's going to go on the uh, warning, Tasha. Oh, I didn't know if you had to vote on it, though. Okay. I don't think so. Nope. Hey, Michelle, it's Eric. Can you hear me? You and we can hear you. All right. Yes, yeah, so I just want to take a few seconds. I want to start off by thanking uh, publicly everyone in my working group. So Assistant Chief Kevin LaRose, Honorary Assistant Chief Peter Coffey, James Goodyear, Lance Burley, and Chris Burley have all spent a lot of time working to build the truck that we feel fits the needs of the town for the next, I'll say 20 years for now. Um, but yeah, we're kind of coming to the end of what I call the building the truck part, and then we'll get into the RFP portion of it. So we are going to um, present just for a cursory review to the equipment uh, committee, that's what you were referencing, Joel. Um, I'm not sure if they'll get together or if they'll just look at it uh, through emails or how they'll handle that. but. Um, we don't necessarily need to provide that to them before we go to bid, but we kind of wanted to do that just to get a second set of eyes on it because they're the ones with a lot of experience buying equipment. Um, so having them look at it, uh, then we hope to go out to bid at the earliest part of January and then um, spend the month of January having the bids out with them due back at the end of January. The group will review them and come up with their choice based on the needs of the town by the end of February. And then meet with the equipment committee again to get their um, input, then move up to the select board for their input, and then hopefully uh, get the bid out by town meeting day with the idea that other towns will be also putting their trucks in uh, for bids. And we want to kind of get in the front of the line because like everything else that we've been ordering, it's a long delay in getting these trucks already. So on a good year, you're talking nine months. These years, you may be talking 14 months. Um, so as we've I mentioned, our current engine one is costing us a lot of money, so we're hoping to get our new engine one as quickly as we can. Uh, so that's kind of the process uh, that we'll be looking over the next three months or so. I just want to update you guys on that. But again, I just wanted to thank everyone on the group for all the time they put together. And it, our time is not done because over the summer, we'll need to look at the, like you guys were talking about the, the equipment on our current engine and what will need to be moved to the new engine, how that'll be. Um, located and spaced uh, because that'll be part of the bid. It will be loading the new tools on or reloading the tools we currently have. Uh, so there'll be a lot of work for the group over the summer. Um, but I just wanted to publicly thank those guys for that and bring it up to you uh, just so you know the schedule that we have going forward. And let me know if you had any questions about what we've been doing. No, I think your email gave us details that I that I needed. So it's up to yeah. the equipment committee. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a quick synopsis of what we've done for the last year. We started, I think, February, but got a little sidetracked by COVID. But yeah, we basically walked around the truck and built it as the way we felt um, we would use it the most efficiently and effectively for the next 20 years, kind of doing a, a needs assessment of what, what our tactics are and how we um, will use it uh, for various things. You know, obviously, we only go to so many fires, but car accidents and, and our other responses. Um, 
but a lot of input from a lot of people um, reaching out to experts on certain things that we may not have had um, the knowledge of, you know, what types of wheels, transmission, stuff like that. And, you know, talking to uh, past engine operators and, um, you know, uh, other departments. Uh, we did lots of road trips to see other trucks. We had lots of trucks come in for us to see, uh, lots of presentations, uh, lots of back and forth. So it was a good experience. Uh, we, we got a lot of input uh, from a lot of people, um, but the, the team really brought it together. So I think, I think the truck we built on paper uh, is going to fit the town very well for the next 20 years. Let's hope so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anybody have any questions for Eric? Well, thanks again. And, uh, Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, great I'll work. Keep you, uh, I'll keep Valerie in the loop as to what's going on. Okay. Hey, Brad, right. if you're still on, you want to like stop sharing your screen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Have a good night. Great. Good night. Thank Bye. you both. Bye. 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 Good thing I didn't put anything else up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, okay, you ready to move on? Okay, continue consideration of whether to pursue assessor services for assistance with grand list maintenance. Yes, this is just a quick update. Uh, I had a chance to meet with Jen and uh, Joel and Mark Bouvier and um, uh, Teresa Guile uh, to, to begin talking about how to approach uh, pursuing professional assessor services. We all agree. It's, there, there seems to be ample agreement that that's the direction we need to go for a number of reasons. The primary one being that maintenance of the grand list is, is increasingly complex. And uh, so the, the listers at the very least could use some professional support. Uh, but the next step would be for me to draft uh, an outline of of a, of a scope of services for a, an assessor based on what we talked about this afternoon. Uh, initially, we're thinking about um, seeking a, 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 a contracted assessor uh, for uh, between uh, eight to 15 hours a week, uh, hopefully uh, uh, dedicating a, one day a week to be in the office uh, to provide support to the listers and for the, and try to I define a little bit, not too, too specifically, but uh, the areas that uh, that the listers really need to have the assessor focus and, and use that use their expertise. Uh, so once I get something drafted, I'll run it by the folks and then we'll uh, present it to the select board for your view. Was there any consideration, Val, about uh, working with like for gens or whatever to get one assessor for? We, we didn't go down that path. Okay. But um, we actually did not talk about it. We didn't have a lot of time this afternoon to talk about it. And I think we focused on uh, what it is we actually need you know, support for. Okay. Any questions from anybody? Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Approval of December 14 minutes. Uh, that'll have to be bumped to the next meeting. Okay, good. I was gonna say, I don't think I saw those. <laughs> oh. Okay, and then approval of January 20th and February 12th of 2018 minutes. I sent Val whatever changes I had, which were minor. And Joel had given me his edits uh, at the last meeting. Okay. So somebody want to make a motion to approve those minutes uh, with, the, with the changes? Okay. With somebody change. second? Second. Darla, Darla seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Um, authorized accounts, payable warrant, and liquor license. Hey, Valerie, did you ever find out about that February 19th one when that was approved? Yes, it was approved in um, March 5th, 2018. <laughs> Perfect, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And That's I have right. the changed one, so okay. I just so want to verify I have the right amount. So it's the one hundred forty thousand two hundred fifty-one dollars and fifty cents. Let's see. Does somebody have the updated one? Oh, wait a minute. I got it right here. My email doesn't on my phone doesn't sort it very good. Okay. 
It's mm -hmm. 140,000, 250, 150. 141, you said? I have 140. 140. $251.50. Make a motion to pay, pay, or we don't make. I have a couple of questions on the pay orders though. Um, was, uh, I saw a parent's bill in there. Was that, that was a little bit less than what he bid? No, that was exactly what he bid. Okay. And I meant to ask it last week, Jen, there was that company Quinto or something that had a $39 late fee. Yes, I finally got that question answered. Sorry, it took me a second. Um, it's just because you guys hadn't met for three weeks. So we missed a, a billing cycle for our mail machine. And that's what we oh, paid. Okay, that was the mail machine. Okay. Yep. So Val, parent didn't charge for the, the additional stone steps. Well, good. One more power to them. They did. It. Boy, I'll tell you, they did a nice job up there. I don't know if any of you guys get up there, but they did a nice job. They might have got a deal on those steps. Oh, they got a deal on those steps. No, no, no. Aaron <laughs> might have got a deal on the steps. <laughs> might they come from you? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, no liquor licenses, right, Jen? Okay. Did everybody get down to sign the warrant? And there are at least three people there. You good? We saw Peeker. It was weird, but we saw him <laughs> in person. You didn't see me. <laughs> no, but I heard rumor mill. <laughs> okay, so we just need to keep that up. <laughs> okay, select for a round table. Darla, I'll start with you tonight. Uh, I haven't, um, I, I haven't run into any, um, residents to talk to them because I'm in my house all the time. But one thing that came up at a meeting that I was at recently um, was a challenge to take the idea of equity and inclusion to all of the tables we sit at. And then I know that we haven't talked about that specifically as a select board, but I think it's something that we might wanna discuss at some point about when we're making all of the decisions that we make at every meeting, that we keep that as a lens that we look through. Um, and speaking of all of the ways that is not only race, but talking about poverty and, and all of the many ways that, that that can be included in our work. So that would be my wish for our board to set aside some time at some point to talk about how we can do that in a meaningful way. Okay. That's it? That's it. Thank you. Uh, Jolie. Well, I don't know. I have one question for the board. I'd like you to... First of all, we all get through all this. And what I brought up about a month and a half ago, Pine Street, you saw in the pay orders, we spent just about 15 cents shy of $12,600 or $60 in repairs in the last month and a half. Two on Pine Street, one on 116, one on Pleasant Street. And I asked the board two months ago, are we going to get serious about, are we going to, am I going to hear again? Uh, we're not going to be able to do Pine Street this year. In 2021, the summer of 2021. You mean pave it, or you're talking about? I'd like to have tomorrow? a. I'd like to have a. You guys think about it through the holidays and come back January 4th, and we let Valerie know whether we get some numbers, and are we going to be committed to do Pine Street, the water line and thing, so we can start putting out the bid, and not put it out in the middle of July when everybody's busy and the prices are higher. That's my goal. Jennifer's going to probably say something. Well, I'm just going to say that we do not have the funds to do that project without bonding. Oh, I, I didn't expect it to. Okay. Well, um, so with that being said, some suggestions I had made to maybe a couple people and maybe even Valerie um, were that um, it probably doesn't fit your timeline that you're trying to work with Joel, but I had suggested that um, if we were going to ask the voters for money to do this project that we combine it with um, the highway garage and just ask them once because I think at some point they're going to to say no and so you know it's going to be like a pick and a choose and unfortunately somebody might might not get what they're hoping for or what they want and i guess 
Well, we'll go back to the John Moyer's state vote he made a minute, minute ago. People who live on um, Meehan Road or wherever in the, in the out of town is not going to pay for the line on Pine Street. It's got to come through the water users. Well, I agree with that, but we had also talked about there's drainage that needed to be done and implemented. So that's a general fund expense. Well, that's Paper why I said I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut it out too much out of the road, capital road budget either. Well, you can't because there's no money there. Because <laughs> um, we've spent all of that money and then some on East and West Street. You know, paving the pine, you know, paving Pine Street if we were going to disrupt it and reshape and do some other things, I'm sure it could be considered. I mean, I don't, I am, forgive me, I'm speaking just in generic terms. I don't know officially what would need to be done, but I assume that would, there would be some things that would be considered road things. And then the water piece would certainly be water. So it would be similar to a West Street. Okay, I guess what I'm saying is split. then I'll, maybe I'll stretch the, the timeline out. By the time we have to put this thing to bed for town meeting or our water department meeting or uh, annual meeting that we get with Alan and he had Pine Street as a number one and then he had a couple of those short streets to get some button up done is maybe we get some numbers and, and I know you've mm -hmm. talked, there's some bonds that have going over or gone away like the north street plank road went away or it's going away this year so we'd have a number as a select board member we'd have a number at our water meeting saying you need to raise the rates x the number to pay for a bond that's 20 years or a 30-year bond i don't know it's just the streets aren't getting any better the water lines aren't getting any better underneath there and um, i agree i totally agree i just think that pine street is a bigger issue than just water i know i water agree with that certainly a, a significant issue on Pine Street, but I also believe that there's, I mean, my understanding of the project was that it was more than just water and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you know, it was drainage, it was rebuilding and shaping some of that road. Um, so I think that it could prove to be a quite pricey. Well, I, like project. I said, and I yeah. mean, investment, I think I agree, Joel, it needs to get done. I'm just, weary of asking the voters to do this and then in two more years asking them for a however many million dollar bond to build a new garage and i i yeah i, I mean part of me thinks that too, kind of is all connected because it's all on pine street miraculously and so maybe we ask them to do it all together saying this is what you get for however many million you get Pine Street redone with a new water line, new storm drains, and you get a new town garage. I'm also uh, working with Jen, or uh, trying uh, trying to find the time to work with Jen to uh, uh, get a better handle, at least from for me, uh, on our total debt uh, obligations and the forecast going forward. And pro projecting several years out and what our, our debt capacity, how that changes over time uh, and, and balance that off with the contributions we're making to uh, reserve funds so that we can make decisions going forward. Uh, if we find that uh, we have some uh, uh, debt capacity you know, to try to schedule some of these larger uh, endeavors and, and not have uh, massive spikes in, uh, in, in the tax rate to pay for these uh, pretty large debt obligations. I mean, I think unfortunately and fortunately, whichever way you wanna look at this, but um, the debt left in the general fund is really big debt. It's not, I mean, you guys have done a great job of taking care of those smaller things. We've paid those off with undesignated fund money, but everything left is like Holly Hall renovation and mm -hmm. stormwater debt and things like that that are now, well, I, pretty, you know. Yeah. I mean, I was just looking at that that bond that I think you told me it just got paid off in 2020. Mm -hmm. the North Street from Corner Pine and North to down by to Roy's Auto used to be. Yep. And, you know, I don't know how many millions or thousands of dollars that was that's just been paid off and not that I want to shoot the water rates 
sky high, but I don't want this system to fall apart either and say, you're looking at a six, seven million, eight million dollar upgrades to all these, because now they're just popping out of the ground constantly. Okay, that's all was I- it that, What was the town that just did, went through that? They had to replace all their water lines because they had they had a catastrophic I believe, failure. I believe Rutland's on a, a ten year program to try to I think they borrowed somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy five million dollars. Mm -hmm. Water line is like a couple hundred years old, hundred and fifty years old down there. Okay. Anything else, Joel? Nope. Okay. Speaker. I'm good. Ian? I'm good. And I am good. Okay, town administrator's report. Uh, I have nothing to add to my written report other than just to uh, point out that uh, the holiday schedule for uh, the town office, and even though it's locked, uh, it will be closed on Friday uh, and uh, it'll be closing uh, at noon on Thursday. Uh, 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 some folks are taking that the whole day off anyway. Okay. All right. Other business? Other business now? Correspondence? Yeah. I see you got stuff on Stony Hill. Yep. Just a, those are just updates and heads up for uh, some things that are going to come along in January. Yeah. The feasibility study, that'll be an interesting one. Yes, it will. Okay. Um, all right. Then we need to go into executive session. Um, I will make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss personal matters for 1 BSA section 313. Happy holidays, everybody who's leaving. <laughs> Second. Second. Third. <laughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor, say aye or raise your aye. hand, wave, whatever. Okay. We are in executive session. Great. Right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.